Welcome back guys. I, uh, I thought today maybe I'd make a, a kind of a sister video to the last video that I made. My last video we talked a lot about dealing with uh, fungal control on fruit trees, specifically apples, but the, the general guidelines for most of your fruit trees. And I thought today we would uh, kind of do a follow-up video and we're going to talk about insect control, the other end of the spectrum. If you saw my fruit tree disease video, uh, we talked a lot about early season spraying, getting your fungicides out early, things like uh, you know silver tip and half inch green and tight cluster and things like that. Very early in the season, these sprays predominantly are being done before the apple tree goes into bloom. Uh, with the insecticide end of it, a lot of your focus is going to be post bloom, after the tree flowers and we actually call that uh, petal fall and petal fall looks something like this and once you get to that stage in the tree's development and you've lost you know 80 75 80 percent of your your flower petals at that point you're producing fruit you've got tiny little fruit in there that are starting to form okay and from this stage forward uh, typically as far as spraying goes we call these cover sprays Everything after the bloom is just referred to as a cover spray. First cover, second cover, third cover. So uh, when I'm talking about cover sprays, this is kind of what I'm, I'm referring to. Now, once the petals start to fall off your trees, uh, almost immediately you can become prone to insect damage. The insects are out there and they're waiting, and once those petals are off and those apples are just starting to form, you can potentially get insect damage right in there. Plum curculio is a classic. They, they get in very early. Uh, winter moth can get into your, your fruit trees very early. And so that's typically when we start our insecticide sprays. So we're going to talk about some of the insecticides that are out there on the market and some of the options that you have. Uh, there's a few little details I'm going to get into about a few insecticides in particular that you should be aware of. And, uh, and we're just going to kind of move forward with this. We're going to talk a little bit about organics, and we're going to talk about cultural controls and, and things of that nature as well. So what do we use to spray to go after these insects? And also keeping in mind that when we get into these cover sprays after the, the bloom, uh, you still want to be aware of fungal issues. You know, you still could run into fungal problems at that point. You know, it, it's, it's quite feasible. Uh, hopefully you got your fungicide sprays out earlier so you've you've already eliminated a lot of that primary infection which will reduce your disease pressure but it's still possible so a lot of these cover sprays usually are combinations of insecticide and fungicide that you're using uh, through the season to maintain your fungus control and then make sure you get adequate insect control as well and you can think well gee that gets kind of complicated because now you got to deal with insecticides and fungicides and and all these different things well uh, a few companies have kind of made that easy for you. They've put together what they call orchard sprays or fruit tree sprays, which are usually these combinations already set up for you. Insecticide and fungicide combinations that you can just go out and apply to your trees. And before we get into some of the details of those sprays, here's my disclaimer, you know, always be careful when you're working with pesticides. Always read the label. Follow the label instructions. Um, you know, different states have different regulations and different rules. You should be aware of um, PHI, the pre-harvest intervals, or days to harvest. That's the interim between when you can spray your trees and when you harvest. They may want you to wait seven days or 30 days, or some of these have zero days. Some of the more natural products will have a zero day, you know, PHI, pre-harvest interval, or, or days to harvest interval. So you should be aware of those things. Always read your label and do what the label says. Okay, regardless of what I tell you or anyone else tells you. Follow label instructions. Now, some of these combination products, like I said, they're called fruit tree sprays or orchard sprays. And they're usually a combination of insecticide and fungicide together, all packaged up real nice for you. And they work. They're good products. There's a few things that you should be aware of with some of these things. Uh, first and foremost, you don't ever want to spray your trees when they're in bloom with an insecticide because your bees are out there, they're pollinating. You don't want to interfere with that pollination. You don't want to hurt your honeybees. They're important and they're, they're struggling right now. So uh, don't ever spray your trees while they're in bloom. You want to wait until that, um, you know, till that petal fall when most of the petals have fallen off. Um, a lot of these, some of these cover sprays that I've seen out there, 
uh, quite often they'll contain uh, captan, which is a fungicide, and they'll contain malathion, which is an insecticide, and they will contain, on the active ingredients, it'll say carbaryl. Okay, carbaryl is the chemical name for seven, which is a very common insecticide. But if you look at the active ingredients on there, it'll say carbaryl with a C, C-A-R-B-A-R-Y-L, something like that, carbaryl. Um, these work. They're effective. Captain is a good fungicide. I talked about it in my fungus video. Malathion is a good insecticide. It's an organophosphate. It, it's old school. It's been around forever and it works. Carbaryl is a good insecticide. It works. There's a few things that you should be aware of specifically with Seven, which is that carbaryl that I was talking about. It's a very good insecticide and it works well. There's a couple of downsides to it. Um, if you had a spider mite problem in previous seasons, you might want to think about avoiding seven because seven actually acts like a steroid for spider mites. And I've seen this happen. If you have a, a spider mite infestation and you hit your trees with some seven, that carbaryl, um, they're going to make your spider mites go into a reproductive frenzy and you're going to have a significant spider mite problem down the road. I've seen it happen, and it, it, it's, it's significant, and, and this is a well-known thing. I mean, this is, you know, this is, it's well-known that, that Seven can do this. Another thing about Seven, in particular, is that Seven has the ability to actually thin your fruit. In fact, in commercial orchards, sometimes these guys will use Seven specifically to thin out their fruit, because you don't want to have five fruits hanging on a cluster, it's too many fruit, and it's a pain in the neck to have somebody go out there and thin them by hand. So they'll just spray seven on them and the seven will knock two or three of those fruit clusters off so that this way each fruit cluster only has maybe two fruit on it or whatever. Uh, so seven can thin your fruit. So if you had a bad fruit set, if you go out right at petal fall and you start looking at your apple trees and you only see, you know, one little apple on each cluster or maybe two for some reason, maybe you had a late frost or you had rainy weather and the bees weren't active and you didn't get a, a good fruit set, you may want to stay away from seven because uh, it can actually make some of those fruits drop off. Now, seven will only do that when the fruits are very small, um, you know, size smaller than a marble. You know, it, it really only acts as a thinner when the fruit are very small. Now, sometimes that can you can use that to your advantage. If you go out at Petafall and you see you've got you know every single flower buds just hanging and you've got five fruits on every single one you can actually use that uh, at, to your advantage to thin out some of those fruits like I said commercial growers do this all the time so I just want to make you aware of that uh, carbaryl is an active ingredient quite often in a lot of these fruit tree sprays and it does have these these two little details to it that a it can actually uh, make a spider mite infestation worse and B, it can thin your fruit, which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing, depending on the situation. Um, and then, of course, they have the fungicide captain in there as well, which can help. So you want to start these sprays right at petal fall, and then you want to apply them a couple of times uh, to help get through that initial thrust, that first generation of potential insect problems, things like coddling moth and... Uh, apple maggot comes in a little bit later, um, oriental fruit moth comes in a little bit later, but winter moth can come in early. And, and that's kind of the routine is, is, you know, first cover, second cover, third cover. You're usually looking at spraying them at maybe 10 to 14 day intervals, kind of depending on weather. And again, follow your label instructions. Okay. Now there are other products out there that I have seen. Combination products, um, I believe ortho and I think fertilome they have an orchard spray out there that is uh, more towards the natural end of things, more towards the organic end of things. And from what I've seen, I think they typically contain pyrethrin and uh, neem oil. It'll, it'll say pyrethrin on the active ingredients, which is a natural insecticide. It comes from a specific chrysanthemum. And it'll say hydrophobic extract of neem seed oil, which is neem oil. Neem oil that has been processed and they pulled the acid directin out of it. And that's a whole another video. Um, and these can be effective as well. I, I feel that they probably are more effective 
on the insecticide end of things than they are on the fungicide things of things. They list it as a fungicide because it has neem oil. In my experience, neem oil is relatively effective as a fungicide. It, it can be useful for powdery mildew, but I haven't found it to be tremendously um, successful dealing with a lot of these other uh, fungal issues. And you're probably going to have to spray those a little more frequently. You're probably looking, I'm, I haven't read the label on it, but I'm guessing you'd be applying those probably at like five to seven day intervals because things like pyrethrin and neem oil, they tend to not have the residual that your more traditional actual pesticides are going to have. So you're going to want to be following these through, okay? And you're also going to want to, usually if you do like, two or three cover sprays starting at petal fall and you get your cover sprays in for four or five weeks after petal fall that will usually give you very good control of that first generation of sprays now there are a few insect pests that can come in a little bit later in the year um, up here in Connecticut they usually come in uh, late July and that's things like apple maggot comes in later in the year uh, you can get a second generation I think it's the second generation of um, the oriental fruit moth can come in later in the year also. So you might want to get another spray out a little bit later in the season. Once you start getting into uh, Jul late July, early August, you get another spray out in case you get some of this second generation coming through. Uh, cultural controls. I want to talk about cultural controls a little bit because I, I am a huge fan of cultural controls. I said this in my, my fungicide video. I'm going to say it again now. I don't like spraying chemicals. I don't like spraying pesticides. Uh, sometimes they're a necessary evil. If you want to get a good crop, you got to do what you got to do. I do everything that I can to try to keep my spraying down to a minimum. And the best way that you can do that is through your cultural controls. Keep your orchard floor clean. A lot of these insects, like I talked about second generation infestations that are going to come in later in the year, like in July and August. A lot of the times these second generations will come from fallen fruit. You see, some of these insects, they'll get into that fruit when they're small. Now, those infected fruits sometimes will just fall right off the tree because the tree knows that they're not going to be very good, and they'll fall off, they'll be on the orchard floor. Well, those insects can actually pupate inside that fruit and then come back out, and sometimes that's where you get your second generation from, is, is from that fallen fruit. So cleaning up the fallen fruit in the orchard floor... <coughs> Every once in a while, go around and clean them all up and get rid of them. And when I say get rid of them, I don't mean just throw them in the woods because these things will still come out and fly back and get onto your apple trees. I mean throw them in a bag and put them out in the trash. Let the garbage man take them away and get rid of them. You want them gone. Uh, keeping your trees healthy. It has been scientifically proven time and time again that a good healthy tree is going to be a lot less prone to insect and disease problems. Okay, Insects tend to attack unhealthy trees. They have a way of knowing if a tree is unhealthy. And if a tree is unhealthy, it's not going to have its natural defense systems in place, and they're not going to be running at 100%. And insects tend to are attracted to these trees. So do everything you can to keep your trees healthy. Uh, mulching. I'm a huge fan of mulching underneath trees. I, I think that the, it just has tremendous benefits. And I'm actually going to do a whole video just on mulching. Um, you know, proper pruning, proper airflow, uh, fertilizing if you need to fertilize you know do a soil test you don't want to over fertilize your trees this is a classic it, fertilizer is not one of these things where more is better and in many cases more can be worse uh, a lot of these insect problems and disease problems they can also target tender new growth on your trees because these tender new growths are the, the leaves are very fragile they don't have a, a thick uh, waxy cuticle on them they don't have a protection mechanism in place and if you're over fertilizing your trees with nitrogen you're going to cause a lot of new growth and that new growth is going to do two things a it's going to fill your canopy up with with leaves that's going to reduce your sunlight penetration and it's also going to be very prone to insect and disease problem because it's that tender new growth so do your soil tests and check and when you feel you need to fertilize fertilize based on soil tests so that you're not over or under doing anything. Make sure the trees are getting what they need. If you mulch your trees properly, after a couple of years of having a good layer of mulch on your trees, and if you mulch them annually, uh, you'll actually create a 
soil bed that should give your tree everything that it needs and you won't even have to think about fertilizing anymore. Like I said, I'm very soon I'm going to be putting out a whole video just on mulching and I'm going to do some soil tests on my garden that I've been mulching for many years and we're going to do a comparative test on that to kind of see just exactly how that worked out. So, um, so these are the kind of things that you want to think about when you're dealing with insects on your fruit trees. Now some of the products you can use, like I said, um, there's these combination products. And like I said, you know, be aware of the carbaryl, that seven, and, and the, the, the nuances of, of what that can do. Um, another product that I have seen out, and it depends, in some states it's actually considered restricted use now, is um, merit. Merit is a very common systemic insecticide. The active ingredient is called imidacloprid. And it's, again, it's a good product. Uh, the problem again with imidacloprid is very much like seven it can create spider mite problems so if you haven't had any mite issues it probably won't be become an issue but if you've had some spider mite issues in the past you might want to avoid imidacloprid or merit uh, that's usually put out by Bayer. Bayer uh, has pretty much got the license locked up on that stuff now let's say you had a spider mite problem in the past let's say last year you had a real issue with spider mites you know, you, you, you had the problem on your leaves, you took it to the uh, extension service and they said, oh, you got spider mites on your, on your fruit trees here. So you don't want to use that seven. You want to stay away from that, uh, at least until you get that mite issue under control. Uh, there are other products out there that you can use. Now, you can buy melathion on its own. Just make sure that it's labeled for your fruit trees, okay? Like I said, read your label. Make sure that if you're spraying peaches, make sure your product is labeled for peaches. If you're spraying apples, make sure it's labeled for apples. I have come across products that are labeled for one and not the other. I, I, there are products out there that you can use on apples, but you're not supposed to use on peaches, and vice versa. Okay? Um, so you can go out and just get the malathion and use that, and this way you're not using the seven. You're staying away from that, but you're still getting your insect control. There's another product out there. It's in a different chemical family which is kind of a nice thing. It's nice to rotate your chemical family so you don't get resistance. Um, and it's called uh, triazicide. It's, it, uh, uh, the, the company name is Spectricide. It usually comes in a black bottle. Well, here, here's a picture of it. Triazicide is, uh, is labeled for fruit trees, at least from what I've seen. And it contains the active ingredient. It's either gamma cyhalothrin or lambda cyhalothrin. It's one of the cyhalothrins. It's, it's in the pyrethroid family. Uh, it's a very effective insecticide. It, it's, you're not going to have uh, so much of that issue with um, with the fruit thinning. And so you can you can put that into your rotational spray program. Um, you would want to use that earlier in the season, like right at petal fall, because like I said, once those fruit get a little bit bigger, once they get up, you know, this big. You're not going to have a problem with the seven thinning them anymore. Seven only thins fruit when they're very small. Um, so that's another option is this triazicide. Now with all that being said, um, another option that a lot of people really do use or utilize and like are what we call horticultural oils. These are uh, dormant oils. And they can be effective. They're usually done very early in the spring or very late in the fall. And... Uh, it's a, it's, these are petroleum oils or neem seed oils and they can be effective at they smother insects. Insects breathe through their skin and so a lot of these oil based insecticides or cultural oil, neem seed oil, whatever um, they actually work because they coat the, the insect with this oil and the insects can't breathe because they breathe through pores in their skin. They don't breathe out of their mouth like we do and it suffocates them. Um, horticultural oils are very safe they are quite often organically accepted and they're very benign for the environment and they can be effective uh, especially for insects that overwinter in the bark a lot of insects some of these insects will, will like lay eggs in cracks in the bark and things like that and you can get pretty good control of these things very early on or later in the year you want to be very careful using these through the summer months because it is an oil and if, you, if it's too hot out you can actually burn uh, burn your leaves or burn your fruit. Uh, it'd be kind of like putting uh, Vaseline on your skin if you go out on a hot summer day, right? You wouldn't want to do that because you, you're going to burn your skin. And it's the same kind of thing holds true with these oils. 
but they can be used effectively and they are very benign and very safe and uh, they can be used for they're good for spider mites but a lot of these insects that are going to be coming into your plant once they go into blossom these oils in the dormant season aren't going to be very effective because the insects just aren't there and these are contact insecticides like i said you have to cover the insect with them um, but they, they can be useful to uh, reduce your insect pressures for later on in the season and getting into the more natural end of things um, we can talk about some of the organic options that are out there. there there are a lot of good options out there for insect control and usually they're going to be a little more pricey and usually your organic products are not going to have the residual you're probably going to have to spray at a closer window you're not going to get you know 10 to 14 days of control out of them you're probably going to get five to seven days control out of them and these are things like the organic pyrethrin uh, neem seed oil but again neem seed oil is an oil so you want to be careful especially when you get into your hotter parts of your growing season um, there's products or well, azatrol I think it's called or yeah I think it's called azatrol this, and this is an interesting product. I, I wasn't going to go down this rabbit hole, but maybe I will very briefly. Neem seed oil has um, an active ingredient in it called azadiractin. And when they harvest neem seed oil, they actually process it and they pull the azadiractin out of it. And so almost all of the products that you see on the market that say neem oil insecticide, if you look at the active ingredient, it's going to say hydrophobic extract of neem seed oil. And that's what they're talking about. They're talking about neem seed oil that's had the azadiractin pulled out of it. And then what they do is they take this azadiractin and they actually sell that separately. They sell that as a separate insecticide. Uh, and it usually has the word aza something in the name, like azatrol. It's usually very expensive and it's very effective. It is a very effective insecticide. And it is an organic option if you don't mind spending the extra money to use that. And all azatrol is is this azadiractin that they sucked out of neem seed oil. Okay, so that's another option uh, uh, for as an insecticide that is organically accepted. Um, insecticidal soaps can also be used. Now again, insecticidal soaps are uh, very similar in the way they work to horticultural oils. You have to contact the insect with it. So you could spray with insecticidal soap, kill some insects, but if new insects come in two days later, they're not going to be affected by that soap at all. Okay, so that's one of the downsides to that. And again, you don't want to use it on really hot summer days for the same reason. It can burn your plants. Another product out there that's uh, interesting is called Surround. Surround WP. And what WP stands for is wettable powder. Surround is kale and clay. It is literally clay. Comes in a bag. It's a powder. It's a very dusty powder. You don't want to use it on a windy day because it will blow everywhere. And you mix your stuff with water and you plaster your trees with it. And if you mix it according to label directions and you spray your trees with it, your trees are going to be white. I mean, it's going to look like somebody spray painted your trees white. People are going to slow down driving by your house going, why the heck is this guy's tree is white? What it does is it actually acts as a repellent. It coats your fruit in this clay covering. It's completely non-toxic and it's completely safe. But it coats your fruit in this, this white powdery clay. And that repels almost all of your fruit eating insects. They don't like it. They get out there and that, that clay, it just bothers them and, and they want nothing to do with it. And they're gone. So it, 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 it's not insecticide in that it kills insects. It's an insecticide relatively effective at repelling insects. There's a downside to surround WP. And again, it comes down to spider mites. Much like the carbaryl that we talked about, making spider mite problems, the imidacloprid making spider mite problems. Surround WP, it, it makes this clay covering. Mites love that. Mites love dusty situations. Um, I worked in a vineyard one time, small, it was a home homeowner vineyard. But there was a, an actual farm vineyard across the road, a little dirt road that went in between them. And the guys in the farm, they'd be buzzing up and down that dirt road with their, their gators, you know, bzz, flying around, going, going to work, coming back. And every time they would drive down that road in the middle of summer, it would make dust. I, owe, I have mite problems in, in that vineyard all the time because of the dust. The dust was, was just creating an environment that the mites love and they're attracted to it. Surround WP can create that same environment. 
So it is, it's a great organic option. The downsides to it is that your trees are going to look really silly because they're going to be painted white and it can create an environment that's very inducive to a spider mite infestation. So you can be aware of that, but it is an option. I just wanted to kind of throw it out there. Um, cultural controls. Again, they work great. They can be very helpful in, in helping to uh, remove some of these uh, uh, insect pressures if you put all your cultural controls into place as well. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. So in a nutshell, if you really want to get you know serious about growing your fruit trees, um, the basic guidelines that I talked about today for insect control, and the basic guidelines that I talked about in my last video, it's called controlling apple scab and other fruit tree diseases or something like that. Um, th these will give you the basic tenets and understandings as to how to approach an insect or disease system to deal with uh, these problems on your fruit trees. Whether you go organically or use traditional pesticides, uh, the guidelines are the same, the timings are the same, the importance of cultural controls are the same. Uh, it's just a matter of which route you want to go down. Okay, I, in my opinion, honestly, I think that um, fungal issues are harder to control organically than insect issues. There's, there's a handful of good uh, organic insecticide options out there, some of which we just talked about and uh, more so than there are organic fungicide options that I find to actually be really effective. Uh, but, but they can be. If you use your cultural controls and get all the other things in place, you know, you can, you can certainly go down that route. But the timings and the, the general guidelines are going to be the same either way that you go. So I hope this video helped. Uh, I hope it kind of gave you an understanding as to how these things work and, and the way we work with them. And I hope it helps you to produce some good fruit. Thanks for watching.